Okay. Okay, it's uh, 0900. I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask for a roll call. All right. Uh, committee member Liptuck. Uh, present. Committee member Neely is not present. Uh, committee member Quant. Here. Committee member Sanders. Here. Committee member C. Here. Vice Chair Dykey. Here. And uh, so, and Chair Rabinowicz is not present. So that makes. You guys are stuck with me. That's what it means. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't be stuck with oh, yeah, I appreciate it. Okay, so we have a quorum. Um, we'll proceed with the meeting. So, agenda item two remote participation under AB 2449. I'm not going to read it because it's not necessary today. Um, we don't have any committee members that re requested it. Um, I'd like to move to the agenda three item. Oh, well, are we, can we here? Please um, note that Mark uh, Neely just arrived. All right, let the record. That. Let the record reflect that committee member Neely has arrived. I'd like to move to the approval of the minutes. Yeah, you have comments on it. No, um, yes. So oh, okay. So you <laughs> move to right. approve the minutes. Have, have, were there any comments on the minutes? Any changes or omissions or errors? Hearing none, um, do we have a second for the motion? Second. Okay, um, call for a vote. Okay. Aye. Okay, it passes. And we'll move on to public comment. And this is the time when any person may address matters not listed on its agenda, but which are within the subject matter of this jurisdiction. The public may comment on the agenda items when the item is called. Each speaker is about three minutes. Do we have any members of the public present? Vice Chair Decky, there is nobody here to make a public comment. Okay, um, and we'll close uh, public comment on general public comments and move to committee business. I have a statement of purpose to read for the record. The role of the Waterways Advisory Committee is to review development projects, both public and private, that are located adjacent to creeks and waterways for consistency with the goals, policies, and regulations for creekside development identified in the Santa Rosa General Plan, Zoning Code, Design Guidelines, and City Creek Master Plan. And believe it or not, that's one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> While the committee does not take formal action on projects, it does provide advisory comments to the decision-making body. All development projects located adjacent to a creek or waterway are required to be reviewed by the WAC, as we're known, prior to proceeding through the entitlement process. <clears throat> um, committee reports. Um, anybody on, on the, any committee members have anything to report? <clears throat> Seeing none, I I'm, think I'm the only one then. Um, I wanted to just reconfirm the status of all our members as far as expiration and where we are and do you have any information you can provide on that? <clears throat> Tell, but hold on, um, Madeline. Do you, I know that there was some. Um, if if people's terms were expiring, they needed to go ahead and re um, resubmit. Yeah, absolutely. So, hi, I'm Madeline. <coughs> um, I'm the uh, administrative analyst for planning and economic development. Um, for those who have terms expiring on December 31st, 2024, if you have served less than one term, uh, then what you would need to do is email the council member who appointed you just with requests that you would like to continue on the board. If you have served longer than one term, then you will actually need to reapply. Um, and then for those who were appointed by a council member, you may not continue as a council member um, after the election. Um, you will stay in your seat until you are either reappointed or replaced by you. So I think I'm, I'm confused. Um, I don't believe I was appointed by a council member. I was appointed by the council at large uh, to, with, uh, and there was um, a vote. And then some of our members are appointed by uh, specific boards. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm a little confused. Well, with that question, then let me go ahead and I'll circle back with Susie with a specific email. Okay. Then we'll have her email all of you, or it might be me, or it might be Mark with the specific instructions for those specific types of appointments. Um, but certainly before the end of October, we'll get an email out with those instructions. Okay, I think I um, sent you a new application. Um, 
So I don't, sorry, I'm not with the oh, clerk's office, so I don't receive them, but I, we can definitely look into that. For okay. You. Did yeah. anybody else send anything? Um, anybody, who, do we know who's expiring? I'm looking it up right now. So uh, Vice Chair Dyke, you are at large appointed by the council. You expire on December 31st, 2025. Oh, okay. The committee member Liptak, you were appointed by the council. And your your term expires on December thirty first, two thousand twenty four. Oh, that's a shame. Mark Neely, but you uh, yours again. You're all appointed by the council. It appears December thirty first, two thousand twenty five. Uh, uh, committee member member Quan. I'm not going to get. I'll, I'd rather call everybody by their first names. <laughs> so you're two thousand twenty four. I was appointed as a member of the. Park and Rec Board, Board of Community mm -hmm. Services, I think Ben was yeah, appointed okay. DRE. Right. You, so I so again, I'm I'm reading the web page. Board member of the uh, Board of Community Services, but you were appointed by the council. The council appoints to boards and commissions, committees, etc. And and they do the final it? approval, is my understanding. But is there a term of service? So there is a term of why don't I not touch yeah, on yeah. who appointed you? Uh your term of service, Vic, is it ends on the 24th, or on uh, 2024. This year, December 31st, according to the website. Okay. So you a year. Huh? That's a one year. I, okay. I again, if you have yeah. questions about it, direct them to the city clerk's office. That's, okay. uh, uh, my information is only as good as what's on the website. Carol, yours, yours, ex, your term expires on the uh, on this December thirty first, two thousand twenty four. And do we know how long these appointments are? I I I don't. Okay. Go exactly. through the city yeah. clerks. Yeah. I don't know how long these so, appointments so, are. For. So I haven't I, finished them. I know, I know, but I want to I want to interrupt you for a second. I will contact the city clerk to find out all this information and provide it to you. Okay, I'll do that today. Provide it to me. Yeah, and and, 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 yeah, and the, the rest of the community. Yeah. 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 Okay, just so to be, just to make sure I um, to avoid correspondence with everyone because if there are back and forth yeah. replies, send it back to me. That, it, that's what I said. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, I, I understand. Perfect. Okay. okay. Don't don't I, I'm copy not, everybody. That's okay. why I that's said that specifically. <laughs> okay. I, I must have misunderstood because it sounded like you were going to send it to everybody. I heard the same thing. Anyways, okay. Um, Terry, yours is uh, 2024 this year, and I. Got me. Oh, got I got. Me. I'm sorry. Got and um, uh, Kevin, yours is next year, December uh, 31st, 2025. What about Steve's? Uh, Steve's yeah. is 2025 as well. Okay. Well, I'm glad we brought this up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so anytime you want to double check, you can. You have a web page. And if you just Google City of Santa Rosa Waterways Advisory Committee, all of that information is on the web page too. And so if I want to continue, so my appointment to this board is through my role as a planning commissioner. Mm -hmm. I would need to talk to Diana McDonald about continuing to be on the planning commission or do, is that something that she just, you know, because she's ostensibly going to be reelected. I, I'd i like to direct that to the clerk's office as okay. well. Okay. So let's 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 go through the let's go to them for all yeah. of the information. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry, you guys. Thanks. If I knew all everything Thanks. that they know, I'd be in the clerk's office. <laughs> <laughs> so we just expect you to I'm sorry to use that. <laughs> it's like a sip the these days, I'm telling you. If I learn it today, I won't know it tomorrow. So okay. That's all. I'm just gonna state the obvious um potentially you know we have this is october i don't know when our next meeting would be but potentially um we might not meet the rest of this year and some of our committee members might not have an appointment so this is something that the committee we need to stay on top of okay so uh, with other committees I'm on, I get notifications um, that something's expiring and they, they say reapply. I thought I got that this year because I, I went through and redid my application. Mm -hmm. But um, you, it was the same I did too you. some time ago, yeah. Yeah, so um, I just want to make sure that we're squared away on that. Okay, is there any other reports from the committee or any other things to bring up from the committee at this time? Yeah. Um, 
the mural on Prince Memorial Greenway has been repainted, the uh, Pomo mural. And I actually have a picture right here, which I would love to share. Um, and hopefully it is the most recent of many. Oh, wow. It was oh, wow. Uh, it was, over. Yeah. It was oh, very wow. beige and faded. <laughs> yeah. Who did the work? Yeah. Um, uh, local um, artists named Joe Salinas and Bobby Von Martin. Um, the goal is to actually continue oh, my. the mural. It yeah. also received um, a layer of graffiti um, removal, and this one is going to be extended with more country. It's just brilliant. So, yes, yeah. Prince yeah, Memorial really Greenway, exactly a, a creep huh? with a future. <laughs> okay. Anything? Anything else? That, and then we're going to move on to agenda item six, department reports. This time is reserved for city staff to provide a briefing on issues of interest. No action will be taken on these matters except to possibly place a particular item on a future agenda for consideration. Um, planning and next development, uh, economic development department. Do we have any reports? We do, but you stole my thunder on one of them. Um, yeah, it's very likely that we won't have any more meetings this year because uh, our next meet, our November meeting falls on Thanksgiving and December the day after Christmas. Um, I'm taking the day after Christmas off, so, wow. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. We just don't like to do meetings on, on yeah. holiday weeks. Um, the other thing, too, is after the first of the year, we'll likely be meeting in room seven. So um, the, there's a conflict with this room. There's a lot of meeting, you know, people uh, want to meet here and there's a fear of overlap. So after the first of the year, make sure you watch, you know, your invite and where the meeting is. Where's room seven? Room seven is where we used to meet. Oh, okay. Okay, that's yeah. right. Yeah, right on City Hall campus. So. Okay. Um, for folks who are looking for a free parking space, there are there's the two hour parking space and the rows closest to the building. If you don't have a parking pass, um, I don't I don't believe you all have parking passes. No, we sure like them. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah let me see if I can get some temporary parking passes. And we won't abuse them. We'll just use them for this problem. We don't need to. I'm repeat. retiring. I'll do. do a, I'll do a, yeah, a, a raffle and I, yeah. <laughs> raffle mine off. I um, think Terry's so. unethical standards are in question. We might not want to reappoint him. <laughs> so I would also like to introduce Mark Claire, who will be our new uh, admin set for these meetings. Is that the right? Uh, title administrative um, assistant administrative senior admin, assistant <laughs> recording senior admin, secretary recording right. secretary i'm sorry i i never know everybody's titles that's terrible um and that is is our department report we're, we're trying to standardize the um agendas and i didn't realize that the water department does have a report uh line item but i think you were going to give your report as um the second I am on the agenda, so I'd like to keep it there if we could. So, um, and then nobody is here from Sonoma County Water. Okay. So, if I understood, so there's there's a separate uh, water department report aside from president. Okay, perfect. No, no, there's not a separate. Oh. Oh. The water department report will all be done with IC seven point two. Okay, then we will pass that. Then is anybody from Sonoma Water? Here. Seeing none, is there anything, Susie, that we have from Sonoma Water? Yeah. Okay. And then we'll move to the schedule items 7.1 public meeting, Santa Rosa Active Transportation Plan. That is me. Okay. Hello. Hello. My name's, if you don't remember me, Torina Wilson. I'm the city's transportation planner. So I deal in everything sidewalk, bike lane, infrastructure, and the grants that support them. Um, I came and chatted with all of you back in May-ish uh, for phase one of public engagement for our active transportation plan. As a reminder, every approximately five years, we update our bicycle and pedestrian plan. The current one was done in 2018, called the 2018 Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan. And we are with we're working on an update and we're renaming it to be the active transportation plan so that it's a little bit more inclusive. Um, 
when I saw you last time, we were in the midst of doing existing conditions. We were doing our first phase of public engagement where we were going out to the community and asking them what their barriers are when they're trying to walk, bike, and roll in the community. We also we wanted to hear anything, really anything they wanted to give us. So it also included, is there anything that we're doing now that you like that you would like to see more of? We had some big maps. We were going to a bunch of um, scheduled events. We had our own workshop. There's a ton that we were doing. We got over 2,000 comments. So it like tripled the amount of comments we got from the 2018 plan, which is great. Since that time, uh, we've synthesized all of that information. We completed the existing conditions report. And then we like merged all of that information into what we have now, which is a um, map of recommendations. And it's a map, and I don't have a formal presentation, but I will share my screen so I can show you how it works. Um, but it's an online interactive map that shows all of the bicycle and pedestrian recommendations that we're making for the entire city. And that's what will be adopted in the active transportation plan around spring of next year. And we're in phase two of public engagement, meaning that that map is live for the public to comment on and let us know when we did public outreach in May, did we listen correctly and did we do the thing that you wanted us to do? Um, when you look at the map and you see the routes that we're proposing, does that look right to you? Is that the route that you would take? Or based on the type of route that we propose, does that feel comfortable or not? Um, I guess I can go ahead and share my screen. Let's make my zoom bigger. Share. Right, we're seeing that. So this is our um, active transportation plan web page. We have a ton of information. So on the top, there's here's what the plan is and what it plans to do. We have information on phase two outreach. I'm going to come back to this in just a second. Um, we have the final existing conditions report if you're interested in, in perusing. And then we have information on past events that we've had. Um, but up here, phase two outreach, that's why I'm here. All of our in-person and virtual options are over. They were the um, earlier part of October. But on the right-hand side here, you see that there's an interactive map. You can click here. It'll take you to a new tab. And this is some introductory uh, language onto our online map. You can view it in Spanish if you're more comfortable in Spanish. There's some instructions on how to use it. And you click open the map. I don't know why we're so zoomed out. That's the first time that's ever happened. Of course. <laughs> that is real active transportation. <laughs> <laughs> we're thinking bigger than I guess. Oh my goodness. All right. So here we are. Um, all of these icons that you're seeing are where the public has already engaged with this map. Um, I think, yeah, I'll go ahead and add comments for now so you can see what the map looks like. Um, and then let me make sure that off for now. So down here in this corner, you'll see different layers that you can turn on and off. You can see all of our existing bicycle and pedestrian network. And then you can see what we're recommending. And we break it down by the classification. This is something that's a, a national standard. We don't expect everyone to know what these classifications mean. So you can go up here to view glossary. It'll again open another tab and it has some pictures and descriptions of what all of those things mean. Some of these pictures are of in Santa Rosa. So for instance, this is uh, the smart trail. And then down here is the um, cycle track that we have on Armory drive behind the uh, SRJC. But when you're on the map, you can interact really as much as you'd like. Um, you can click on a facility. So let's see, I can scroll into Girdville Road and you can see on the bottom, it shows a red line, which if you have the legend showing, you would know that this is a class two bike lane. And then if you click on it, you can see that we recommend a separated bike lane, which is considered a class four, and then you can go to the legend and say, oh, a separated bike lane is one that has these bollards like on Armory Drive. So at this point, um, we're asking folks to come onto this map, 
review it and see if it aligns with what you would hope to see, what you would expect to see, if it aligns with the type of infrastructure that you're interested in seeing or that you would potentially use. Um, you can provide comments directly on it. So let me do show comments and then, man, I have not interacted with this in so long. Okay, you can add a point and it'll tell you how to do that. I'm not gonna do that because I my comments go elsewhere, but you do that and <coughs> it puts a little icon and you can drop it and you can put some comments there. Um, also, you can click on other people's comments. So this person at uh, Paulin Creek says, it'd be great to have a crossing for bikes and peds at the creek paths where they intersect with main roads. And you can see seven people have gone on and they've liked it. You could dislike if you felt so inclined. Um, and then you can also comment um, on other people's comments as well. So the ask at this point and why I'm with all of you is we need as many people to take this survey as possible. Um, we don't need as many as we needed in the beginning because, because with all of the outreach we did in phase one, we got a ton of comprehensive feedback. And this is our reaction to it as best as we possibly can with what our roadways look like, if there's on-street parking, right? There's a ton of limitations. Um, but we're interested from your perspective, does this look right? Also from your perspective as a water rights advisory committee member, um, you know, when we are looking at, like that comment said, a crossing of Pollen Creek with a main roadway, you know, take a look, see what we're proposing and see if you feel comfortable or if you want something else. Um, I will highlight that the survey closes on Saturday at the end of the day. Um, so the link to it was in your staff report. So hopefully you got it a little bit early. Uh, but otherwise, it's been out and about in the community. We also work with every department, which includes Creeks. So the Creeks team is part of our internal technical advisory committee. So they review the map. Um, not all of their comments at this point are reflected on the map. That's something that we give to the consultant at the close of the public outreach, and then they'll come up with new studies. Um, one other thing I want to highlight I think it might be my last thing is, so you can toggle back and forth between people biking and people walking. It's a little hard to see with all um, infrastructure on at one time. Sorry. Right? Um, but so you'll notice when you're on the people walking tab that there's a ton of these yellow icons. And when you click on them, they're all going to say the same thing. And that is that that's a location that we're recommending for a pedestrian spot improvement. The reason that we don't have more details is one, because there's so many, there's like 500 icons in here. And we, as a jurisdiction, we can't go in at this point and say, here's exactly what we would do in every location right now. Instead, we are using these icons as a like programmatic, here's where we know that there's a pedestrian conflict that we need to consider. And in the active transportation plan, we're gonna have a list of various treatments that that could be. Is it a raised crosswalk? Is it high visibility markings? Is it a flashing beacon? You know, what needs to happen here? We will have to look at on a case by case basis. Um, the same is true if you're on the people biking tab. You'll notice that there's a ton of these like pale blue colors. These are bike boulevards. Um, those, again, we will have a suite of potential traffic calming options in the active transportation plan. And we'll have to go project by project and do outreach and figure out what treatments would work on what segment. But that's what I have. Um, the link to this active transportation plan is in your staff report. And then you just scroll down a little bit and this map is on the right hand side. And then, like I said, it does close at the end of the day on Saturday. That's a great briefing. Do, is there a creek overlay also? All of those are in here. So we don't show like a, a blue line for where the creeks are, but they are labeled. And we did take the GIS layer from the um, citywide Creek Master Plan. So we show all of the locations where there's a proposed paved 
Creek path. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the ones that we show, it's the existing paths that are just gravel and they're, they're just recommended for improvements based on the Creek master plan, but they should all be in there. Yeah. And then what happens to the recommendations? So they recommend that something should happen. So the next step after public mm -hmm. comment closes is the consultant takes all those comments and comes up with the final recommendations map. And then they go through a prioritization process. They will rank all of the projects against one another under certain criteria. Some of that criteria is, um, so the projects that would be prioritized would be ones that are in equity priority communities, ones that are on the high injury network, near schools, near parks, near places that are big bike ped generators. Um, and there's a ton of other criteria, but essentially that's what we're focusing on is projects that are gonna have the biggest impact for the people who are gonna be using them. And then that is what city staff works on for the next, until we do the plan again. Um, and so in the 2018 plan, a lot of the projects that got prioritized are things like um, the bike ped overcrossing of Highway 101, um, the cycle track that's now on Santa Rosa Avenue right out front, um, all the projects that have gone in downtown with the most recent slurry project where we put in bike lanes, those are in that plan. So the things in here are what I work on. And so when you're addressing the priority of equity priority areas, even within that area, there's a hierarchy, right? I mean, are you yes. going to do, so where do the creeks fall? So we're going to work in, in the EPAs. Yeah. Where on the important structure are the creek paths? Yeah, that depends on a ton of criteria. So every project will get its own technical scoring matrix. The scoring matrix is going to be same for each project, but there's like a dozen criteria for bikes, a dozen criteria for PEDS. And a creek project could be prioritized if it links to a school, if it is within an equity priority community. Um, and then it would also be based on what is there now. So are there alternative routes that people could also use? Um, we've set up the scoring in a way where Projects will get more points if they go from, say, so for North Dutton, for example, uh, between College and West Third, there's no bike lanes. So a project to put bike lanes on North Dutton would score higher than Guerneville Road, where we have unprotected bike lanes and would make them protected. So we're focusing on places where there's currently no access. So I can't completely answer your question because right, right, right. <laughs> it, it's based on, but when we have, so in February, don't quote me, I end up being March, um, we will have a public draft of the plan and I'll be shooting that. I might not come to another presentation, but I'll be shooting that over to all of the staff liaisons mm -hmm. so they can forward that to you. But it'll be a public draft of the entire plan in like an online PDF interactive uh, form so you can comment on it. And that will show you all of our high priority projects and you'll get to see where things fell in that list. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And so once that's done, I guess what I'm curious about is, you know, when you have all these great plans and then you've got this master recommendation, yeah. does it just sit on the shelf without Action. How do we, you know, we've identified that this is where we want to start. Yeah. When do we get the shovel into the ground yeah, to that's, start it? That's Who the makes bane of decision? my existence. Where <laughs> <laughs> so if they were up, or you can have a plan, but you got to implement yes. it somehow. You got to pay for it. Yes. Right? If it were up to me and I had unlimited funding and I had unlimited staff, every plan would get complete immediately. <laughs> right. And that's the same for every department. What we find, especially with the last plan, so the 2018 Bike Ped Master Plan, they, in their prioritization, picked something like 20 to 30 projects that were the heaviest hitters, they were the uh, most important for us to go after. And 90% of those are complete. 
um, or in the process. So only 10-ish percent of those are ones where we have not been able to find funding or something else has come up, like a development came in or something happened where we couldn't do it. That means though, that everything that was not on that top list probably isn't getting done. Mm -hmm. Partly for good reason. Uh, the 2018 plan was not very ambitious. And at that point, research on bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure was not as far as it is now. So we know now that the goal is that everything is as separated and low stress as humanly possible so that it's built for all ages and abilities. If you feel comfortable taking your six-year-old to school on a bike, that's obviously going to be <clears throat> super comfortable for most people of any ability. Um, with this plan, it's my job to find resources to implement as much as I possibly can, which means I have the same limitations that any of our departments would have, which is funding, <laughs> uh, limited staff to do certain things in-house, or there are certain things where the project's just too big, we have to go out to bid. And then as we all know, sometimes there's issues with contractors. So. And last, I possible. promise, promise this is my last question. Yes. Um, are, are there dollar amounts assigned to certain things? Do you have that? We will have a range. The problem that we're finding is that the increase in cost of projects changes on a weekly basis. Of course. Um, so for instance, the bike pit overcrossing bridge that we're doing, it was fully funded. And then one year later, oops, it's gonna be 10 more million dollars. So <laughs> our consultant was scoped to give us a more like hard dollar cost. But when I was looking at all of the work that they're doing, I frankly felt like that was a waste of time. So instead what they're gonna do is they're gonna look at all of the recent bids that have come in for us for various projects and they're gonna make ranges. And I'm having them give me like, you know, when you look up restaurants and you have a one, two or a $3 sign, that's what I'm looking for mm -hmm. because I have mm -hmm. no control over what costs. That's a good idea. Yeah. Who awesome. knows if that ends up being true like a year down the road, but. I don't want my consultant to spend a ton of time costing all of my projects yeah. because in a month, yeah. that just flies off the window. Yeah, yeah. Give you a relative comparison. Yes, yeah. exactly. I have a question. Yeah. And you do too. Yeah, whoever would like to go first. Arm wrestling. Okay, I'll pick Carol <laughs> first. <laughs> so I like to consider myself a real geek for these things. I do every city survey. Yeah. I never got beyond the active page. I never saw this before. I am zooming really? in and yeah. I'll, I'll own that. Yeah. Um, the fact that it closes on Saturday, I don't know if there's any room for extension. I don't know what kind of um, social media outreach, but in looking at these, suddenly I'm thinking about the best of Sonoma County where Oliver's always gets the best market and King's Nursery always gets yes. the best nursery because yeah. they push. So I can go to my neighborhood. Oh, I want that crosswalk mm -hmm. too. There's nine likes. I could talk to my neighbors and I could pump it up to 15 For sure. before tomorrow morning. Yeah. That's also kind of like stuffing the ballot box. Is that yeah. what you want us to do? And for me to do this, shouldn't there be somebody like me in every neighborhood who's yeah. trying to stuff the ballot box and has that there are a lot of these yellows that have no comments at all. Yes. That's what the cities, and I'm assuming somebody either got clipped or it's speeders that there's reasons, yeah. but do you want us stuffing ballot boxes? <laughs> and could I get some more time if you do? Because <laughs> <laughs> Right. So nothing on the back is going to go away unless somebody comments and says, this is a terrible location to recommend an improvement, instead put it two blocks over. So nothing's gonna go away. Um, the only thing we would do, I would think is elevate a suggestion. So if we suggest a class four <laughs> like a protected bike lane and someone says, no one would ever be comfortable in a protected bike lane on this road make it a class one, like a separated multi-use path. That's the kind of edit that would happen. Um, when a recommendation has a bunch of likes, that's great. It shows that there's support for that project. 
uh, but there would be no plan to change it necessarily. So the only time we would make a change is if someone's telling us we got something wrong, if that makes sense. Um, so like the stuffing of the ballot box shows that there's support for certain projects, but really what we're looking for in the outreach is if we got something wrong. Um, and that's what I would hope people focus on. If you see something that you like, I mean, don't like it. That doesn't mean nothing to me, right? I am curious to see what people like. Um, in terms of the outreach for the, um, or like marketing of the survey itself, we went to the same folks that we did in the first phase of outreach. The only difference this year or for this phase is that we're not doing as many in-person pop-up events because I need people on the survey, not necessarily giving you the input to my face because I'm not going to go put that comment. I want you to comment in the survey. Um, but so we went to the same people, sent them the information. And then at that point, it's not out of my hands, right? I go to like the Council on Aging and Common Ground Society, and I ask them to send it out to their networks, but I don't have that power to send it to their networks. So mm -hmm. I have found that engagement was, was a little bit harder this time. Um, so I'm hoping that it, it helps a little bit. And I do recognize I'm here just a couple days before it closes. That was how the meetings ended up settling. So I apologize for that. Um, but I hope that that kind of gives some context on what I'm looking for. Yeah. And yeah. Saturdays are for yes. cut off. At the end of the day? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I have, first a comment. I happened to be in San Francisco yesterday and mm -hmm. saw center of the road bike lanes. Oh, and yeah. I just, I like, I was aware of it mostly because you came and spoke with us. So mm -hmm. like, I'm really much more keenly aware of bike paths right now, yeah. but I'm, I'm most, I'm usually a pedestrian. I happen to be a driver mm -hmm. uh, yesterday. Um, and I'm, I, and, you know, creeks and things like that, but I'm, I'm wondering to what extent the proposed active transportation plan um, takes into consideration things that, that we know are fairly far along in planning stages that are, for instance, the, uh, the Roseland Creek Park mm -hmm. and the, uh, is it called the Southwest Greenway? The new, the new, the, 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 hey, hey, Southeast. Oh, well, it's close. <laughs> it's just facing the wrong direction. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's like, is that, is that somehow considered in this new plan already? Yes. So oh, everything good. that is at some point in the pipeline of our planning process is included. And the reason it had to be was because the consultant needs to know where will there maybe be connections in the future that we have to account for. So if someone wants to go from downtown to the Southeast Greenway, yeah. they now know Southeast Greenway is going to be a thing. How would they do that? So then they consider that. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are some things on the map, I don't know if you would end up noticing, but some people have, where we have projects that rolled out at the same time they were making the map. Mm -hmm. So like all the bike lanes that went in downtown yes. with the slurry project, they were making the map as that was happening. So that's not currently reflected in the map, but it's part of my comments to them to add because now they're existing. Um, and they will do that by the time the final plan or the draft plan is out for review. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Those center lane bike lanes are crazy. I was just in I, DC and there was a really cool one. <laughs> yeah. They are crazy. And I, I I mean, just as a first time driver, I was like, yeah, it there, you know, with a center bike lane. Yes. Holy cow. Yeah. It was very comfortable to ride on in DC. It really yeah, I like that. So great. Yeah. Any other questions for Karina? Okay, thanks Thank for the you presentation. Yeah. Thank you. I'm yeah. hoping yeah. we can all get on it in the next couple yeah. days. Yes. Yeah. All right, so move on to Santa River Water. Oh, hey. I'm going to move down here to the computer so it's going to stay plugged in. Oh, can you let's keep the presentation? I'm going to make the next one again. We've had parallel road shows, and I always go second. I've heard Tarina. <laughs> <laughs> about eight times and she's her point zero. <laughs> <laughs> I do care. Thank you. <laughs> you do care. And we actually collaborate quite a bit. 
Um, thank you. Great. Right. And then can I put this back by the presentation mode? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Right. Um, well, good morning, Mr. Dykey and everybody. Um, as you can see, I am not Kyle. Kyle um, called in sick this morning. So, and Steve is at jury duty. So you get me today. Um, I will do my best to answer your questions and go through Kyle's presentation. Um, yeah, and he did a great job of teeing it all up for me. So. Just state your name for the records. Thank you. Claire Myers, uh, Stormont and Beats Manager. Thanks. Right. Uh, okay, so going to the next slide. Is it like still late? I'm pretty sure I saw you yesterday. I was riding a really long, tall escalator. I looked down and I think you were, was that you? That was, was me. Yeah. yeah, I just went up for the day. Yesterday was the, or this week was the Casco California Stormwater Quality Association annual conference. Um, did you catch my presentation in the morning? No, I, I was moderating. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, so several members of our team were up. Uh, it's it's a great conference about stormwater. And then, um, yeah, I did a presentation on the Storm Drain Master Plan and uh, funding, getting funding for the plan and trying to find funding for storm drain infrastructure. So I have to talk about that always too. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So today we just wanted to um, really bring an update on a number of different things and the programs that we're working on. I'm actually really sad that Kyle isn't here because he has been doing a fantastic job spearheading all of these, you know, he is our Creek stewardship program coordinator. Um, he's been in that position about two years and he really just is running with it. Um, so wanted to bring you some updates about our last fiscal year, which closed at the end of June. Um, we had a great year overall. We had more events. Um, we saw participation from the public increase by about 20%. Um, our trash volumes remained about the same, um, uh, but you know we were able to get in there and I think augment the amount that we were able to clean up. Um, so some of the, the specific statistics he lighted, highlighted here, you know, we had almost 10,000 participants, which is great, including almost 8,000 youth. Uh, 198 volunteer creek cleanups, 92 creek restoration activities, um, about 1,100 cubic yards of trash. Um, there's a graphic that shows you what, what that looks like in real life. Um, yeah, and a lot of education, which is something that, you know, our team is really proud of, is uh, getting in front of kids, um, classrooms, groups, getting kids out on the creeks, counting benthic macroinvertebrates, doing water quality testing, looking at tree canopy, just trying to get kids really excited about careers in this field. Um, you know, learning, oh, I could do this as a job. Um, just feeling really empowered and just getting excited about the creeks in the community. So that's one of my favorite parts. Um, and then this photo is from uh, uh, a scout troop that did an underground tour. So... Uh, so then this visual representation, so of 10 cubic yards is, is one of these trucks, I guess. I think of a cubic yard as about a, like a washing machine. Um, so if we had, you know, 11, 1,160 cubic yards, you could picture 160 of these trucks. Um, so that's the amount of garbage that we pulled out of the creeks this year. And please feel free to ask. I don't know if you have questions as we go or at the end. It's, it's like it's here. Okay, it's whatever you prefer. You prefer yeah. Uh, yeah, happy to happy to attempt to answer as we go along. Um, wanted to give you an update on our 2024 20, Creek Week. Um, it was a great year. I saw some of you at different events. Um, we did similar activities to last year, but saw again, just increased participation. Um, we had our cleanup at the end of the week. We saw 74 attendees, which is great. We had 80 registered. So that was a really high actual turnout um, and got 888 pounds removed from that one morning. 
Um, we had a nature walk this year. We had 28 attendees for that. Um, we're able to break them out into two small groups and really pair them with a biologist and, you know, uh, dive deep into the creek that I think started at Flat Rock Park and went in two different directions, um, kind of a loop and included one of our creek restoration areas along Santa Rosa Creek. Um, so folks could see too, you know, what, what an unrestored area looks like and what a, a restored area looks like. We had, let's see here, we had a bike ride on the Friday of that week. We had 22 attendees. Um, that was really successful. The, the group stayed together and um, <coughs> enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, yeah, on the left-hand side, you can see all the events. The photo on the right is from our downtown underground tours. So we changed that a little bit this year. We still did it on two nights, but instead of having uh, a specific time for a tour, we had more of an open house style and had it open for two hours so folks could come and you know, come down. We found that it worked much better for us. Actually, we were able to get a lot more people. Um, people sort of naturally staggered their timing. So then we didn't, it, if you've done the tour, you know, you have to climb down, you know, it's like rock climbing basically. So instead of having people kind of stacked up and feeling self-conscious about going down slow, you know, people were able to come and get down at their own speed. Um, and we had 94 attendees on Tuesday and 101 on Thursday. Um, yeah, and people people really love it. It's a it's a really fun tour. So we were really excited to see those numbers. Um, this is my favorite event. This is the city staff dash for trash. This is I think our third year of doing this, um, and we really try to build it up in the city and different teams trash talk each other. And, um, <laughs> we let people set their own team. In past years, it had been sort of by group or division and we let people make their own groups although they tended to stick within their own divisions um and everybody came up with a funny name that had a pun in it um and we had 56 staff who participated um staff got uh 1800 pounds of trash mm. in one morning mm. um and we had we had 25 who came out at city hall they got 637 pounds we had 23 at um, MSC South. They got 548. And then the Laguna Treatment Plant, who was this year's winners. Um, I, oh, the Waste Warriors. That's that was <laughs> um, the, the eight folks that you see here actually got 629 pounds removed. They were able to go and get a small crane and pull some stuff out of they the. <laughs> they, <laughs> they use their resources. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's always been on here with a grabber. Yeah, <laughs> no, I did. I don't. I don't know if my write up reaches you, but it's a little write up of you know, and you know all of the winners, and we kind of make it up as we go along. And you know, there's different ones I've have um, made winners in the past of like the micro trash you know folks you know a woman got only a half a pound but it was every tiny bit <laughs> um and you know folks who had to go home and take a shower afterwards they got so into the creek and got the really disgusting stuff and um you know it was um so yeah we try to reward not just weight um how big is a trophy? It looks—it's not a trash can size. It's a little trash can. It's a big. Trash can size. That would be amazing. Trash can. Is it a working trash can? I mean, it could be. It is. It's a—it's a very small trash can that we spray painted gold and had mounted on a little base, um, and we are engraving the the names of the winners on the sides. And it, I will say, it is quite coveted. And the number of emails I got. The next day saying well who's the winner um it was really funny so they get to keep it doesn't pass on for the year you get to hold it for the year oh, if you good. are the winner and they have to give it up and they it's like a Stanley cup yeah yeah, yeah. 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 It's good. i like that yeah it's yeah. the trash cup um so it's been really fun and um, again just more participants every year uh let's see so i guess these are our total stats for creek week last year we had 375 participants and 2700 pounds of trash removed from so yeah just really proud of that um and it's up from last year last year i guess we had 230 participants and 695 pounds of trash so we quadrupled that right for pounds uh 
And then Colgan Creek, we wanted to give you an update. My understanding is Kellen was here in May um, and gave a broad update. That's about right. Okay, I don't know if you were all there. Um, a lot of these slides are the same, some are new. So if you've heard all of this before. We like hearing it again. All right, then let's go. Mm -hmm. um, so Lower Colgan Creek, you're all pretty, I think, familiar with the project overall. You know, phase one um, is the, the southern, you know, uh, western side. Uh, that was constructed in 2014. Phase two was constructed in 2021. Oh, I can do this. I bet. Can you see? Oh. Phase two is at the top, um, constructed in 2022, and then phase three is linking those two sections, which is sort of unusual for a restoration project, but how it worked out, um, because we needed to acquire that property that's at the corner there, we call the Bell property, um, and we were just able to do that finally last year, so that's why you're seeing this funny order um, of events. Um, let's see, you probably know about most of this. 1.3 miles will be the total amount of restoration when we're done. Um, and it's it's a complete channel realignment and reconstruction. We're adding new in-stream habitat, uh, features a paved trail, increased riparian um, areas. Uh, flood protection will go from a 25-year storm event to a 100-year storm event, which is really exciting for us. Um, and then phase three that um, currently we are planning for actually construction starting in next summer um, will be through uh, a new city park. Um, so I have some slides that show that in better detail. So you've probably seen some of these. The, the bottom left photo uh, is a before photo that shows, you know, it's highly channelized engineered creek. Um, and then the other photos are some of the after photos where you've been able to come in and create more meanders, um, pull out the invasive species and plant natives, um, get some more interesting features, some of the log features we see here. My kids really like to play on those. Um, and yeah, and then at the bottom right, you see some of the high school students uh, from Elsie Allen. That's one of the schools that we coordinate with a lot and their biology classes come down there. Yeah, right in the creek. It's 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 an amazing program. Um, phase three specifically is what will begin construction in uh, around June fifteenth or so next year. Um, that specific stretch is about twenty five hundred feet of channelized creek. You can see uh, the top photo is of phase three. The bottom photo is actually phase one, but you'll see you know it'll go from that straight line to a meander. Um, reducing erosion. We talked about in-stream habitat features. We have about 2,500 native riparian trees and shrubs. Something uh, new to this part of the um, phase is um, installing pollinator and basketry plantings. We were able to partner with a group called Rainforest Rising that is looking at ways to um, increase monarch habitat. Um, we happen to be right in lined with uh, a corridor of monarch habitat. And so they're looking at ways to augment um, plants, essentially um, seed dispersal. They're, they're, they're looking at new ways to get more seeds in the ground faster. Um, so we are having some test areas in phase three, um, really excited about that. And then a lot of um, work in terms of the new plants that we're putting in, we're trying to coordinate with local tribes to put in um, basket tree plantings. You know, Elsie Allen, Elsie Allen High School is named after is a local um, indigenous woman known for her basket work. And so we wanted to bring that element into the creek as much as we can. Um, and then also artwork um, and community education, part of our grants that we've gotten are working with um, local native groups um, on artwork. Uh, talked about the floodplain and then yeah the, the new path will be uh, ADA bicycle and pedestrian and then also have a little bridge so this one I like this one because you can see really how you know creeks don't under normal circumstances go straight down and then just turn at a right angle um, so what we did with our um, designer, Pranuski Chatham, they went in and really looked at how can we um, 
you know, how can we return the creek to a more natural shape? What was really interesting about this project is usually within the city, we're really confined. You know, you have buildings on either side and we want to restore a channel, but you can't move around a lot. But because we were able for this phase and in phase two to actually buy land, we are able to expand and, and really change the alignment in a way to try to get it to be much more natural. Um, so they, you know, they looked at historical aerials of what the creek was. Um, you know, they looked at streams of the same watershed size and what it would naturally do. Um, we looked at amplitude and the wavelength of the meanders, and this is what they came up with. Um, we also played around, and you, I imagine that you all will hear a lot about this from the residents. Um, we really tried to minimize the number of trees that were cut down. Um, some of you went on the tour. I remember when we walked this, there's some beautiful old trees out there. Um, you know, a number will have to be cut down because by returning the creek to the channel, it cuts right across, you know, an area with trees. However, we went in and Kellen on our team was so thoughtful and marked every single tree and worked with the consultant. Like, okay, how can we, like, where is the wiggle room here? So, um, I, you know, it will be hard to see and we'll be replanting at a mitigation ratio, you know, that, um, you know, there will be far more trees replanted, um, but we do expect members of the community to, you know, to see the, that tree loss and um, that part is going to be hard. Claire, would you repeat the name of the design? Pernusky Chatham. Pernusky? Pernusky? It's Pernusky. I always, I always put an extra N in it. Yeah. It's Pernusky P R U N U S K E, I think. Chatham, C H A T H A M, I want to say. Okay. And they've been involved through all three, all three stages. Thank you. Um, sure. <clears throat> um, this is a concept plan for what the park may look like. Um, you know, Parks will do this stage of it and they will be doing a lot of public outreach. Um, this is truly just a concept, um, but um, you can see um, the, it doesn't show the creek as well as I would like it to, the kind of dash blue line that goes through, but it's, it's really an opportunity to have a park that focuses on a creek as a really integrated part of the park itself. And I know our team has been pushing for that with parks, um, you know, don't make it a park near a creek, make a park with a creek and, you know, make that be a part of the experience. Um, so, so that's our hope, but you'll see it'll have, so it'll have the creek and then they'll have um, play areas, you know, I guess pickleball is what they say everybody always wants now. So <laughs> some pickleball courts, um, yeah, they're still sort of figuring that out. They don't, you know, the creek itself really limits the amount of park area and um, what they can do with it. But, um, but a couple of questions before you. So, sure. what's this blue line that kind of goes on the perimeter? What is that? The old creek. I think that might be the old creek. Looks like it. Yeah, looks like it. Sense. I think so. It doesn't. I don't see. It looks it. like the shape of it. Yeah. I didn't know oh, it old straightened creek channel to be restored. Yep. <laughs> okay. So that's and it. And on the Bell property, I, yes, I had thought that some of those buildings were going to be retained because of historical. Is that the case or not? So we we did a we with Parks did an analysis of the historical um, nature of the buildings, and it was determined that they are not they don't oh, okay. need to be saved more space then. um yeah so the so parks decided that they yeah they'll be torn down to okay yeah i'm gonna put my park and rec hat on sure so the city owns this property yes but it has not gone out for community as a neighborhood park it reaches out to a half mile radius for input um from the neighbors has that already begun no okay so we're probably a good five the, I don't. I can't give you a number. We've been very involved with parks to you know procure the parcel. We got a grant um, from Open Space. You might recall that pays for half of it, um, and then keeping them in the loop through our planning because all of our restoration impacts their usable area. Um, so they have not started the process of going out to the public but yet. We own the land. Yes. Um, we don't have the money for the development of the park. That I don't know. Or you do, you do know? I'll find out. Okay, yeah. Um, 
So, but it's still many years out and this, this neighborhood is pretty developed, continuing to develop. Yeah. The, the park is lagging behind, but that's not unusual either. Yeah. A, a side question, the last time we met, a development came to us that was bordering on the creek. Is that close to this no, parcel? It's on, it's on the west side. It's oh. just downstream. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's adjacent to the first phase one. I just sent a note to the <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. kind of, if you keep going downstream, yeah, over off the page here. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Question. Yeah. How many weeks a year um, is there water? Uh, how many months a year is there water in this portion of the creek typically? Do we dry up in the summer? I think there's water in it right now. Is there? Yeah, cool. not much, but there is a little. I think there can there can be a little bit of water okay. most of the okay. time. Good. Yeah. Second question, phase two, we walked that part of the project yeah. and that trail along the creek dead ended yeah. at the north end. Yeah. I saw in one of these, when I was looking over the material for today, one of one of the maps indicated that the trail was going to continue to the north. Does that mean that that dead end is going to be removed? And Eventually, <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's been something we've been working, actually something Trina and I have been working on for a while. The Hearn Hub project that's being constructed up there. We have at minimum set aside the space for the path to be continued up to, what would that be Hearn, I guess? Um, and then in the meantime, trying to find grants um, to get the trail finished. Um, and cause that's something too, that we talk about with the grants that we get for this project. It's like, if we can get that connected all the way up to Hearn Hub, then you get the smart path mm -hmm. and smart train. That's a, a major connection point. So it, it will happen. Um, good. the, the timeframe, we're still sort of trying to find resources to make it happen. Okay, good. Thanks. Sure. Oh, and just a fun note, because we all got really excited about this. Um, although phase two hasn't been restored yet, phase one and phase, or phase three, I'm sorry, hasn't been done yet. Phase one and two have, um, and we saw signs of a beaver um, a few months back, um, right kind of near the, the crook of it. Um, so that was really exciting for our team. Where was it? It was, it was, uh, Kind of around the outfalls that come over oh, here, right, like okay. right in Great. the crook um, oh, where okay. it turns. Nice. So that's very, yeah, that's pretty unusual, but a great sign. Historically, were there salmon in this? I don't think that this, I could be wrong, but I don't think that this okay. is salmon. Yeah, I can ask Steve though. I'll ask him. We'll start with the beaver. Yeah, <laughs> we got otters on phase two. We had otters like two weeks after um, it finished. It was it was amazing. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, phase three. Um, I'm sorry. Phase one, two, three grants have totaled um, over eleven million dollars. Um, that's it's really important, as you know. Our team gets some of the money from the Stormwater Enterprise. Fee, but we really are able to leverage that and use it as the matching portions of other grants. Our big restoration projects primarily come from grants. Um, and we've, especially with phase three, we've been really successful. Um, I think the last time I was here, next slide, um, Sonoma County Ag and Open Space, that was the 1.2 million for acquisition of the Bell Parcel. Um, Urban Streams Restoration Program, that was 4.4 million for construction. And then um, the Wildlife Conservation Board has officially been secured that grant. Um, and that was for over $2 million for construction. That's a new one for us. And they've been a really great partner in all of this. Um, so all those are set funding? They're all uh, on it, actually... The, the bottom two are done, done. Um, we're still in the process of the final stages of securing the ag and open space okay. um, grant itself. Um, and then, you know, some of the, like I mentioned, some of the additional features from the Wildlife Conservation Board are the Monarch Meadows. That's a part of that grant, the basketry plants. Um, oh, uh, the art, we are planning on doing a mural. We're looking at hopefully a large mural along that back um, wall um, of the park. It'll be on the far side of the park. We're trying to kind of integrate 
as part of integrating the creek with the park. If that's not possible, depending on parks, you know, um, timing for their project, we have a number of ideas about you know, the pathway or smaller murals that can be moved. Um, our, we, uh, the, the bridge on, what is the name of the little street that's the... Dunn Meadow? <laughs> um, some art on the bridge there, but yeah, we're really trying to weave it in um, in collaboration, all of that art in collaboration with local tribe members, so. Uh, that's our update. Happy, happy to answer any additional questions. Yeah. I know the park is a little ways off. Yeah. But would that uh, part with pickleball and structures and people yuck the yum of a virgin beaver population? Mm -hmm. Um, that's an interesting question. I think I would hope not. You know, I would hope that in whatever way that the that the, it was integrated would be a way that wouldn't, it would be against our goals. And I think it would go against our grants, um, you know, and wouldn't be allowed if, if the influence of people in that area degraded the creek quality um, or habitat. So I think that is something that we would, we would make sure didn't happen. Actually, we'd have to go through the same standards as any other building permit. Steve Brady reports out no historical reports of salmon or steelhead trout. Shane <laughs> <laughs> on his way to jury duty. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so great. You guys know that. <laughs> Any other questions for Claire? Well, I have to say, if, if um, I don't think Kyle could have done any better than what you did. That was a, I mean, you have all the answers. It's a great presentation, Claire. Thanks Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yeah. And Thanks I, very much. I had a suggestion. No, we already closed it. Oh. <laughs> 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 I to say, there's so much excitement over the Southeast Greenway and that yeah. also being purchased. Yeah. Yeah. But the amount of infrastructure that's going into the Southwest section for parks and the people who live in the Southwest, yeah. this is... This is what excites me. Yeah. 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 Great. I had a suggestion for the city staff day. Yeah. So instead of sending out an email, I'll send out a, a blanket invite to everybody so it gets on their calendars. You know, I tried to do that. Um, we can discuss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just tried to do that. I was like, I want this on everyone's calendars. Just naturally, they have to decline it. Right. Ask, <laughs> ask the department heads individually. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's a good, that's good, that's good mm -hmm. intel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're at the point of the end of the meeting. I just, I just want to say to the committee, um, uh, I'll work with the city clerk's office and through Susie and let everybody get informed because um, there's uh, some questions about our status um, for the potential next meeting that will, might not be until 2025. So you guys will hear something from Susie at some point in the next, I hope, the next week or two. I think that you may hear something from um, actually our city clerk's office. There's been emails flying around during the meeting. City clerk's office to give you guys, you know, right. to reach out to anybody who needs to do anything now. So, and be real clear about what that direction is. That should really come <clears> from <throat> the city clerk's office. Right. So yeah. I don't Mess it up. Okay. So I am, yeah, yeah that's, I, that's, right. that's their, their deal. The other thing that I would like to, I want to add and remember that several of you have been in, well, you've all been invited to the lunch uh, next week. And I don't see all of your names on the yes, I'm going list. So um, if you haven't already and you want to go, it's on the 29th. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't see your name, so I don't know if I you're did. planning. I, I did register, so I don't you know did? I didn't see it. Okay, I'll um, um, follow up on that. I'm probably you, in different category because I had dietary restrictions. So. Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. They sent me a link to the names that are on there. Well, let me just double check to but, see. Uh, I and I, did I, even have a ticket. I even got a ticket here from e or whatever. Perfect. So long you got your ticket. Right. You got, I didn't see your um, name. I, I, had it, I signed up and then I had to change my mind. Okay. Yeah, I make it, so. Unfortunately, it was a nice event last year. That was. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Well, that could be for anybody like that. You three. 
idea yeah. of needing the iron and vine. Okay, if right. there's nothing else, then oh, oh, oh. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's all it's me. Um, I would love an update on the um, cannery apartment building. I know they're going to start occupying. They're going to start reaching out. Yep. I got a notice saying that they're they're uh, they are they have reached out. They've done mailers. They're leasing up. Oh, I get goosebumps just talking about that. I. I will tell you with absolute sincerity that if I could move in there, I would. <laughs> I think their units are beautiful. I think that they have done such an outstanding job. John Stewart, he's a legend. So, um, but yeah, I, I, it's it's coming to a head. They just we just told them where they can put their signs. <laughs> you can put your signs. <laughs> so uh, yeah, real exciting. I um, I've asked that. I'm hoping that I can bust in there before and see them when they're all finished and yeah. just get a, you know, have they determined go to the my suite. The street? Huh? Have they determined the name for the street? That I don't know, mm -hmm. but I can, I can ask. I, I think it may have the words John and Stuart involved mm -hmm. in it. But it I'm doesn't, not it's an opportunity it. lost. I, 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 you know what? I'm with you. <laughs> will you please take pictures and share them with us? Oh, absolutely. I will. Absolutely. Even if I'm retired, <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back. So anyways, yeah, I will. I, I don't know if they're going to be doing any more tours with the finished, the finished product. And if they are, we'll try to get mm -hmm. our boards and commissions in again. So thanks for and staff. Yeah, yeah, that's really great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they do a great tour. Huh? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Okay, with that, uh, meeting in the journal. All right, thank you. Thanks, Fire. That was great. Yeah.